Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to kick off our workflow series using Tinkercad. Now, uh, just up front, this is not going to be a tutorial. While we'll hit on some tips and tricks as we go through the different episodes, this is just uh, simply going to be a running segment uh, where we go over workflows, specifically the workflows which I use in, in Tinkercad to uh, uh, develop certain things. We're also going to do a similar one for uh, OpenSCAD too. However, again, in workflows, what we're going to be looking at is how do you how do you actually do a, a completed object? How do you actually work within the environment? How do you use the environment to be most productive? So those are going to be the things that we're going to focus on in the various tips and tricks which I've learned over the time of, of using uh, Tinkercad and basically the computer environment all together in a CAD setting. So let's kind of kick this off. So one of the pieces that, that I want to do is, is first of all, I'll talk about my interaction with, with uh, Tinkercad. And the fact with Tinkercad, as you can see here on the screen, you can develop some pretty complex models. Now, un unfortunately, most of the um, stuff that Tinkercad is aimed at is, is, I would say, you know, kind of like what I've referred to as, as kitty things, you know, making little rabbits and robots. And uh, However, Tinkercad is actually a very serious application, and you can do some pretty complex objects. Now, this is not Fusion 360 or SolidWorks or something like that, so, so don't don't get that idea. However, you can do a lot of very sophisticated mock-ups and this is one of the things that we're going to kind of walk through is how do you do this? How do you set up your work environment to get the most out of it as quickly as possible? Because that's really the key, getting the most work done in the shortest amount of time. So to do this, one of the things, to give you a little bit of background, well, my day job isn't quite in the CAD world over my life, many, many years. Uh, I've worked quite a bit in the in the CAD industry and, and in the um, uh, product development life cycle field and things like that so it's so very familiar with the interactions of that environment and how it works and one of the big things that uh, I want to share is one of the tricks that I use is actually the contour shuttle express now I'll put links to both of these uh, shuttles uh, down below in the video and there'll be more on the website uh, blog post about these uh, however these these are these are great little tools and I'm going to kind of uh, talk about the various different pieces of this. So you have the Shuttle Express. Now this is the one I particularly use because I don't I do not do this every day. So you notice it's got an inner wheel, it's got an outer wheel, and five buttons. To be honest with you, that's about all my muscle memory can remember not doing this day in, day out in this environment. Now there's also a, a Shuttle Express Pro which again has the uh, inner outer wheel but far more buttons. Now the one big challenge here with both of these is you have to remember what the buttons do and if you do it every day what happens is you develop muscle memory obviously for these these buttons and you can control these buttons far better so um, with this said you know again I, I use the Express because I can remember the five buttons pretty easy basically what happens too is your hand rests on these buttons and and so the idea is you have one hand on a mouse, one hand on uh, the uh, shuttle. So I'm right-handed, so I use the mouse in my right hand, and my my left hand sits on this. So what I'm able to do is actually manipulate the screen with uh, the shuttle, and then manipulate the objects with the mouse. So it's a very effective way of working, if you will. And again, uh, you simply get more components with this. Now, one of the things that I want to show is, is how does this work, you might be asking. Well, one of the pieces is uh, if we drag in the control window, because as you saw a little bit earlier, I opened this up. So here's the control window down here for the control shuttle. And here are the, the basic functions. So button one through five and then the jog wheels. Now you can change these to different settings to do different things. Now you can kind of see up here. So I have uh, command D for duplicate and I have command C for copy. Uh, I've got R for ruler. So these are the pieces they do. Now the other thing notice over here, basically what happens is this is by application. So this is what's really cool about this is you can set it for different applications now since um, 
uh, you know, it, um, Tinkercad is a web-based application, and it's focused on, uh, you, you know, cloud-based infrastructure. It's going through a web browser. So basically, this functionality is going to be set for all of, of Chrome. So that's kind of the downside. But the reality is, for me, I don't use the puck except for doing doing CAD type work so if I'm just surfing the internet it really doesn't matter that it's dedicated to, to um, uh, you know uh, Chrome but you can see the, the huge list and you can add to this list too so it, it so this isn't all inclusive and so you can use it for a lot more applications than obviously just Tinkercad so uh, again very very uh, you know much important piece uh, you know to speeding up workflow because again uh, I use this all the time, especially the duplicate in place command, uh, because I can just bang it out. Because I create the object with my my right hand, I just bang the first button with, with uh, actually uh, the side of my hand, uh, because if you remember, it's the bigger button uh, on the side here. So this is button one. So you just hit it with the side of your hand, and boom, it's duplicated, and I can grab it with my mouse and go. So it's all about getting work done. So again, very efficient tool. And then down here, you can kind of see how you can set the keystrokes up. And again, you can set for keystrokes. You can set it to run macros. And that's the other important thing that we'll talk a little bit about is keyboard macros and that. So uh, again, highly recommend this. Um, uh, if you're going to be doing this a lot, if you're going to be working in the CAD, a lot of high-end graphics workstations have dedicated CAD pendants. Uh, so if you work in the business, you know what I'm talking about. And again, very effective uh, way to go. So with this, I kind of want to jump back into Tinkercad because the other piece that I, I wanted to highlight with Tinkercad is the keyboard shortcuts. There are a large number that people don't realize keyboard shortcuts with Tinkercad, you know, from copy, paste, ungroup. So all these can be structured into either keyboard macros or um, uh, functions with inside the the contour shuttle or puck as I typically refer to it so again makes it very effective that you can do all these things so as you notice I had the ruler so I can place the ruler on the uh, work surface very quickly just by pressing the middle button and and so again makes it a very effective uh, tool for moving through Tinkercad so I want to go back and show a little bit. So now I have the object, and unfortunately you can't see me, but now I'm working, I'm spinning the inner circle. So I have very finite control of my my zoom levels. And then if I hit the outer ring, I can do very fast zoom levels. So again, I can do this very quickly. Now if I select this bearing and I hit, hit with my hand, again, I've now duplicated this bearing in one action. So again, this makes for very quick work of the environment. So uh, again, both hands are on the, um, one hand is on the mouse, one hand is on the uh, puck. Very little keyboard interaction. So uh, again, you get very good at this. Uh, you don't have to touch the keyboard very much. And that's really the key is to keep the work flowing. So again, very effective tools for moving through Tinkercad. Um, and again, you can have a button for delete, make it go away, uh, and uh, voila, you're back to your object. And again, you know, you, you can do the pan and tilt, and then you can do, see, I'm doing pan and tilt and zoom together with, with both hands and not touching the keyboard. So you can look at an object in very complex ways. So uh, hopefully that explains it. The other piece that I do is I use two screens. So I have two 27-inch screens, uh, one actually uh, in landscape mode, one in portrait mode, so I can have the best of both worlds. And with this, I, I'm what you're seeing now is basically my landscape. I typically work the majority in landscape, and my portrait mode monitor is a reference monitor. So on that screen, I have my uh, English to metric calculators. I have another web browser open. Uh, I have other tools open uh, to do calculations for this. I have a finder window open for my objects. We'll talk about that in, in a future episode uh, of bringing in objects. And, and so that makes it very handy. Um, also, I can run the keyboard automator. I can run text expander. Now, 
probably one of the things I should uh, speak a little bit about is Mac versus PC. Now, I'm a bit ambidextrous when it comes to PC and Mac. I do prefer the Mac a little bit because there's a number of tool sets. Now, the Puck will work, the Pucker Shuttle as, as it is, will work on both PC and Mac. So that's, that's ambidextrous with platforms. However, some of the tools I'm going to mention are more Mac-centric. Now, some of these can be replicated on the PC. However, I can I use uh, tools like Keyboard Automator, Pop Clip, uh, Text Expander, etc. within this environment to speed it up. And, and again, some of these can be replicated on the PC. And so a lot of what I'm going to go through in these tutorials are mainly going to be done on the Mac. And, and um, actually for speed, one of the most of my work is done on the Mac with these applications because... Um, I do have these extra tools and we'll look at uh, a couple other ones too in, in future episodes of how you can apply it that, that are focused on the Mac. But uh, anyways, most of these again can be replicated in some shape, fashion, or form on the PC. So uh, with that being said, wanted to kind of um, uh, with this episode talk about a couple more things because this is going to be basically the intro episode. So as I've already covered out, I use the Contour uh, Shuttle Express. So I use a smaller one. I use it in dual hand mode. You see some of mine. Now I do change those configurations depending upon the jobs or tasks that I'm working on to make it more specific. So if I'm going to be doing a lot of grouping, I'll change some of the buttons to be group um, just for that session. And again, you can set up different sessions in the uh, in, in the contour application itself. So again, there's tons of stuff you can do in that alone. Um, as far as using Tinkercad in my workflows, Chrome, Chrome, and more Chrome. Um, again, I don't mean to get into a religious debate, but uh, uh, Chrome is basically the best to run Tinkercad. I've done Foxfire, I've done Safari, I've done Internet Explorer, I've done Chrome. Uh, Chrome by far is the fastest, most effective in, in running this uh, because of its OpenGL libraries, etc. So one of the things to understand if you're not familiar with, um, you know, the whole world of cloud, what, what is happening is your browser is only rendering a graphic image. All the mathematics of this are being done out on Autodesk's computers in the cloud and then the, the geometries are being sent back to OpenGL, which is a standard graphics library format um, that's running on your computer. Now, having having a good graphics card and everything is good for the rendering and the fast rendering of this, so, so don't think that that's you know, not required. Uh, I'm running this on a rather souped up MacBook Pro that's actually running three monitors. Um, uh, and it's, you know, with an internal graphics card, so it, 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 it speeds along pretty good in its actions. I'm also running 16 gigs of memory in it, so uh, it has plenty of room for a lot of stuff, so don't have to worry about running out of memory. Uh, so it makes it a very effective tool in this, but Chrome, Chrome, and more Chrome as far as working with this is, is the best best bet. Um, also, one of the things that I do want to kind of show is, is down here is uh, setting up um, SnapGrid. One of the things that I always do, and I had just opened this before coming in, is SnapGrid is going to default to basically one or one millimeter in this case. So, you know, each one of these basic grids, you know, objects will snap to other objects on that resolution. For me, I always just turn it to, to the minimum. Now, you notice that it also has off. I really don't like off. I typically just go with the lowest resolution and, and snug it up because, again, one of the things I can do if I go the right way here is is really zoom in on the object and, and can move it pretty tight. Now, one thing to, to uh, understand that, that this does that I really don't like is it never goes totally vertical um, or it never gives you a 90 degree perspective of the object. Uh, in reference to a, a tilted plane, so so right there, I mean, we have we have roughly 100. If I balance it out, we have a 180 degree view, because roughly, because this is straight across. I know I don't have it perfect, but I if I mess with it, I can. However, if I tilt it this way, if I want to have it dead on, if I want to look straight down on this this nut head here. I can't uh, because I'm still a couple degrees tilted. Now this makes it very difficult to center objects, and this is where 
the align function, and we'll talk about this a little bit in the future, that the align function comes in. So if I go up here and click align, you see the align. So I can click in the X, Y, and Z axis with, with the align function. However, it only aligns to the bigger objects. So this is a problem. So understand that this, this is just simply a shortcoming of Tinkercad, as it does not allow you a straight on 90 degree <clears throat> excuse me, view of, of your work plane, which is a little bit problematic. And, and one of the actual problems, I see this from being a very, very serious application because it's very hard to get things specifically centered in certain locations uh, if you can't use the align tool. And especially if you're trying to align multiple objects, uh, it, again, it becomes very difficult. And this is the one major shortcoming, and I want to warn you of that inside Tinkercad. Um, so with that, I think I've rambled on for quite a bit, but I, I've given you kind of the settings. So I just want to do a little bit of recap because at the end of these workflow sessions, I do want to recap a couple of the key points. So first, first point is the shuttle. So, um, huge time saver allows you to move through these very fast. Uh, you know, and if you're just a hobbyist and you just kind of want to putz with it, probably not needed, but if you're going to do, uh, do you, if you want to create some rather serious three-dimensional objects and really get involved in this, I highly recommend it. If you look at a lot of high-end uh, CAD workstations, as I've already covered out, use graphic pendants to consolidate complex actions. And this is what we're doing because you can build rather complex macros or sequences even based upon all these keystrokes. And this is the second thing is I want you to be aware of is that these keystrokes exist. Well, there's uh, I, I am a I am a programmer, so I do program in multiple languages. So that means a lot of typing at the keyboard. So I'm used to keyboard entry. With CAD, I try to avoid the keyboard entry um, because it takes too long. Because my hands should not be resting on it. Because the object of your hands are to manipulate objects in three dimensional space, uh, sort of. So what I want to do is I want to build these keystrokes, use these keystrokes as an opportunity into my dimensional tools, i.e. the puck in this case. Also, if you have a gaming mouse with multiple functionality, it's great to program these functions in and get used to them with muscle memory, and then you can just really wham the workout. The other piece is, is Chrome, Chrome, Chrome. Use, uh, utilizing the Chrome browser is, is to me, critical. Um, Again, I've used other browsers with this. I find Chrome the best uh, in rendering, lack of artifacts, uh, art artifacts, if I spit that out correctly. So again, very important pieces. Um, the second piece is, is uh, you know, setting your snap grid. I usually set it to the lowest. Again, you want to, and I do tailor this to, to the job. Now, it's sort of a rule of thumb here is at what resolution will you be working at to create your uh, product is, is really what you want that set at because then that sort of gives you the tolerances that you're working with. So this is why I don't turn it off because I do want to have that extra little bump, if you will, of connecting things up, but not so much where it's 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 off kilter, if you know what I mean. So again, uh, hopefully this helped in kind of setting up um, Tinkercad. Uh, for you kind of getting a workflow oh the other thing I forgot to mention is the double monitors if you can afford the double monitors definitely the way to go maybe you're not doing 27 inch monitors like I'm doing uh, even 19 22 24 inch monitors uh, just not of only for Tinkercad or CAD work in general but any type of work um, dual screens are, are a big one uh, so anyways, uh, hopefully this helped and look forward to see you in the next episode of Tinkercad Workflows. Cheers.